it's already 602 so i'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order but i do not have the ability to start the recording oh i can do that i think start it's recording not. okay you know can i hear I, you i can't tell it, you. Should, it should have started all right thank you time is 602 calling the february meeting of the cb fiber governing board to order uh to start off, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none. Um, open it up for public comment. While we're waiting to see if anybody raises their hands, I'll jump in and say, I'm obviously reading, leading things today. Um, <laughs> Siobhan is on a well-deserved vacation, um, hopefully somewhere warm and tropical, uh, and we'll be coming back think on the 17th. But a lot to get through today. So if there's no public comment, not seeing any, we can move on to meeting minutes approval. Uh, motion to approve the uh, January 9th, 2024 meeting minutes as drafted uh, with a correction provided by Linda. Uh, apparently I misspelled her last name. So I need to add an extra L to that. Second. Seconded by Chuck. Any discussion? Any abstentions or what we're we looking for? Nays. <laughs> Not hearing any. Say it passes by unanimous consent. Treasurer's report. Thought I saw Laura Beth on here, maybe. I do see Lori Beth connected. Uh, Lori Beth is muted, however. Lori Beth, are you stepped there? Stepped away for a minute. David, do you feel you no. could handle the treasurer's report or should we come back to Lori later? Yeah, let's see uh, if she can join us. Okay. We could always go on to the next item and then at the yeah. end of that check to see if she's back. Let's move on then to the construction materials, warehousing and operations part of the project here. Is that uh, Janiel? I can start and then um, Lucas can add detail or color as he would like. Um, the highlight of this update is that we lit our number 100 customer last week on Monday. We spoke with Waitsfield today and we have 113 customers now. We have 15 in the queue, which is a full week. So we're, we added a couple new drops crews. And so we're able to do about 15 drops per week. Um, we have 229 miles built, 1,762 addresses passed. Uh, we are, doing our count for the audit we are truing up the numbers for the audit and we're focusing primarily because we're we're low on runway we're focusing pr primarily on um installations through weights field so that's the high that's the high level would you like to add any color to any of that, Lucas, or any highlights that I might have missed on construction, materials, warehousing, and operations? Well, you're being optimistic by saying we're we're low on the green runway. I I think we are at the end of the runway right now. So crews are mainly working on, on punch list material right now. Um, so I believe we have two out there taking care of, of you know, Osnins that, that were missed initially. Um, you know, Exciting news that we talked about earlier is Waitsfield requested that we release RSO1 and RSO2 for installations. So they will be 
beginning the drops and and whatnot in, in in those areas in the next coming weeks. So we're moving ahead there. That'll be another um, another pile of installations that that we can add on. Um, and as far as warehousing, um, you know, like beyond the audit, I, I believe we're caught up with everything coming in at the moment until we can place the order for 2024 construction. Um, yeah, so I actually want to add another piece of amazing um, statistics that we, we that we have. We are now at 41.9% take rate. Let's just call it 42% take rate in both CLO1 and CLO2. When we originally did our projections, we thought that we would be at about 20% take rate in year one, 30% rate take rate in year two, and about 41 to 42% take rate in year three. So it, we opened CLO one in October, we opened CLO two in December, and we are already at 41.9, call it 42% take rate. Okay. That's amazing. Olivia, you want to add to that? I do want to add to that. Uh, RSO1 and RSO2 were just uh, made live on our website as of noon today, and an email went out to everybody who pre-registered. And as of two minutes ago, we've already had a 25% take rate in RSO1 and RSO2 wow. since noon. Guys, this is unbelievable. This is absolutely unbelievable. Um, we never could have dreamed of such amazing success so quickly. Um, that just says so much about what the value is of what we're offering. Um, I, I mean, big, big kudos to CV Fiber. This is incredible. Um, we're really making a difference for people. And I might add that the, the, the ARPU, the average rate per user is $96. That's, we, we, we projected it at around 94. Um, that means the average, the average rate that folks are, paying per month is is 96 that's that's higher than we anticipated that means people are buying higher rate packages than we anticipated this thinking about it from what it, what it actually means for us besides that we're offering an incredible service at an incredible rate it's that we're positioning ourselves for the mo the bond market long term so this is this is setting us up for excellent marketing success as we as we develop, as we start um, serving, and as we go into the bond market in the next couple of years, Jeremy. Yeah, that's fantastic news. Really glad to hear that. Um, I am curious if we think that this is, if these areas where we've built are outliers, or and and I know it's really early, maybe hard to guess, but do you think that these are outliers, or do you think that we're going to be likely to see similar, you know, twenty five? Present take rates in 12 hours, <laughs> which is fabulous. Um, well, it would be nice to have um, a magic eight ball, but um, what what I what I can say is that when we're serving the unserved and the underserved, I I, th I, th I think that that the that the take rate take rates are likely to be very high. Um, Jerry. Yeah, I, I, I would just add that some of the areas that we're going into and will be going into in the future have more competition, but that means that doesn't mean that our take rate necessarily will go down because a lot of people see what we're bringing is a superior product uh, because it's community based and, and, you know, I can go on and on. So I wouldn't discount the take rates we've been seeing at all. Uh, and I'll I'll stop with that. I saw in the chat there was a question of what does it mean to be at the end of the runway? And Lucas addressed it. Um, that it means to have built out all of the pole license that we have received in the district area, which we have been able to construct. So we do need to start really defining our terms. Maybe if you want to create a little dictionary for for staff to work through because certainly these definitions sometimes matter and um, they're not always that clear. Yes, Jeremy. So um, on that, I believe that in the executive committee, uh, there was, or in one of the meetings anyways, there's some discussion about um, getting after Hardwick. Uh, has there been any progress made in getting them to actually give us licenses because I believe that they're a holdup or 
have we made any progress in sort of the nuclear option of going to the department and uh, and kind of taking that on for ourselves? Um, there has been progress in the uh, nuclear option. We reached out to the Department of Public Service. I reached out to Jim Porter and um, Aaron, who are uh, in charge of broadband and um, general counsel for for um, for the uh, department. And I let them know that we are intending to file a formal complaint with the Public Utilities Commission. Um, they reached out to Hardwick to see if they could get something moving. I advised them today that we intend to file the formal notice to Hardwick by next week if we don't see immediate results. It's unfortunate that we've gotten here, but it's time and there is a recourse for a reason. So we're taking that recourse. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we've been well more than fair with them given that they had a year to respond, they didn't respond and were what, at least two or three months past that, that you know, they're, they're causing us big problems at this point. This is violating our grant agreement to provide service to the unserved. This is violating our requirements under our federal contracts and funds to um, bring universal service. So it is critically important that we proceed with the legal avenue at this point. Yeah. Um, you know, for the discussion on this topic, we can go to marketing and communi community relations. Uh, so I'll start with Legislative Day. Um, it was an opportunity for us to meet with our sister CUDs and really network with our um, our local reps. So it was a really well attended event. Um, a lot of brainstorming behind the scenes. We've posted a recap on our website if you haven't had a chance to uh, read through that, but. I am working now with the marketing teams at our sister CUDs, um, those who are working with Waitsfield specifically, just so that we can align on some of that messaging. And those have been really fruitful discussions um, as we move forward. We'll probably be working uh, more closely hand in hand just to make sure we're aligned. Um, we've also published a statement of values uh, on our page, um, a little bit of a storytelling component with our brand pillars. I'll post that in the chat. Um, it is a little bit of a longer piece, but again, it adds color to who we are as a company um, and the value that we want to provide more so on a community level. So I'll share that as well. Um, in terms of our new customer survey, uh, we've had about 40% people um, after their installation, about two weeks afterwards, they do get that survey uh, to fill out. And we've actually um, been reviewing those um, piece by piece for feedback. Customers are generally happy with the speed, the reliability and the service. And uh, according to their perspectives, we're actually better than some of the competitors in the area. Uh, many of us, many of them would recommend us as referrals. So word of mouth is incredibly important, as we know, social media, front porch forum, locally based. Um, so we take those you know, testimonials to heart. Uh, we've actually created a testimonial slider on our homepage as well. Uh, we've received approval from some of our customers. So again, really leaning into that as we expand to new areas. Uh, in terms of some of that new customer content as well, everyone gets a, a Wi-Fi magnet as part of the installation process. So if you've ever been to another home and you're curious how to get connected, um, it has a little fill in the blank section. Again, something useful. Uh, it includes a, an area to fill out for network uh, name and password, along with a phone number for tech support. Again, something useful that people can get a little bit of brand awareness as well. Um, and in terms of what's in the pipeline, um, we may have an event coming up in Woodbury, perhaps. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, and in April, we'll be sending out a quarterly update with overarching metrics. And also, um, we're, we're segmenting our list. So those who are now customers of CV Fiber, they'll be getting a separate email with connectivity tips and tricks. Um, we've been talking with Waitsfield, and we're hearing some of the concerns in terms of having outdated technology, for example. So a lot of the questions that are coming through right now, we wanna make sure that we have a resource hub specifically for CV Fiber customers. So we'll be building that out on our website as well. 
Any questions for Olivia? I thought I saw Laura Beth's name flash for a second, so I don't know if she's available to do the treasurer's I'm report. He I'm here now. <laughs> Just okay. trying to do two places at once and it doesn't work. Um, before I did before you launch out, into it, Laurie, I see, I see David raised his hand top? at the last second there, so I'm not sure if he was trying to speak on that last topic. <laughs> yeah, I was. Is, I, okay. I didn't understand what no. the... Um, um, I had the sent out the financial statements closing information for last year, for 2023. That's what David wanted to look at tonight. And so I have sent that out to everyone. Um, hopefully most of you got it. There were a few detailed questions that David asked me that I think Bonnie is more qualified to answer um, because she know, is more familiar with some of the ender things. I have to do researching for them. So um, I'm not as comfortable answering some of those questions. OK. Um, sure where to go now. Yeah. Uh, hey, Tom, I, I yes. think the only the only thing I asked Lori to look at was our cash position. I talked to Bonnie about it tonight, and we are at plan with our cash position. I wanted to make sure the board knew that uh, based on we made some assumptions when we built the 24 plan on what our cash position would be. And Bonnie has affirmed that we're right where we planned uh, at, at the end of the year. So we're, we're in a good position moving into 2024. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Lori. Um, going back real quick, it looked like Dave Lawrence had a question about the, the outdated technology you mentioned, Olivia. Can you elaborate a little more? Yeah, so a couple of folks um, have a little bit thicker walls in their home, as we know with all older homes. Um, the Wi-Fi connection is not um, as expansive as you go throughout the entire home, so you might be getting better connection in one home uh, where the router is located compared to another, for example. So as people are testing speeds and want to ensure, as they should, that they're getting the connectivity speed that they're paying for, um, the outdated technology is just not cutting it anymore. Um, so we're making recommendations, again, if people are able to go out and, and buy maybe a laptop that's not 10 years old, great. Um, but otherwise, you know, we want to make sure that people are getting the speeds that are that we're ensuring. Um, unfortunately, that technology component is is out of our hands. So it's just a matter of educating now at this point so people are aware. So it was our customers' technology, their computers and their in-home Wi-Fi and so forth. Correct. Yeah, it has some of those earlier Wi-Fi capabilities, but unfortunately, they're just not cutting it anymore. Great. Thanks. All right. Move on to the board and committee memberships. Um, the policy committee is short members, and so that was one of the items we wanted to touch upon. I don't know if you want to make a pitch, Alan, or if anybody is already raring to go. There were some policy conversations that happened over email, so it might be a, a hot topic. Can people hear me? Yes. Oh, good. OK, I was having trouble with my mic again. <clears throat> yeah, we're uh, we're down to two people. Uh, we have a third person who is on a vacation. Uh, uh, status, and so it's not clear if she's coming back as a full member or not. It's it's interesting. It, with two people, you can still you can still have a meeting because you have a you have a quorum. Um, but it, <laughs> but if one if one of those people is not if, if one of those persons is not there, then you don't have a quorum, and we can't do anything, let alone sit there and you know Google and make notes for yourself. So we really need uh, at least one more person. Three would be fine, but a bit more than that would be would be helpful as well. I know that policy work probably seems pretty nerdy to most people, but there are some folks out there who really revel in it and uh, find it an interesting way to, to learn how an organization is trying to run itself and what kind of job it's doing against some of the some of the some of the mm -hmm. guidelines it's set for itself in in policies. So it's a it's sort of a backdoor way to to learning about the organization that I think a lot of people don't realize. So it's not completely boring. Our meetings really do only last an hour and then we leave. And um, uh, they're always uh, uh, good minutes if you miss a meeting so you can catch up and we try to take care of each other. That's my pitch. 
I'll toss in that it's a, an influential mm -hmm. committee. The, the decisions that come out of that committee have far reaching you know, legs to them. So, um, and I'd also add that if you're going from three to four, your quorum number would then be three. And so you'd need that new person to attend every time. Um, That's right. If we, get, if we get another person past that, then we're up to five, then you can still just do three and have two absences and still have a quorum. So that yeah, would be great if we yeah. get to at least five. I, I think a, and anybody who has who's been part of committees recognizes what you just said, Tom, that you don't want to have four people uh, on your on your board or on your committee or whatever it is, because it makes quorums really, really difficult at times. And if you can do either three or five, you're much better off. John? Yeah, well, I'm fresh meat here, so I'm happy to get uh, queued up for a uh, committee. Um, I probably would fall into the uh, camp of uh, finding policy a little uh, nerdy, but that's fine. And uh, and I don't know how it stacks up with what the needs are for other committees, but I'm certainly happy to be put on a committee, including policy, and maybe should wait to hear what the rest of the committee needs needs are. Yeah, John, why why, why, don't, why don't you do that? I I think I think that would be the best thing for you, so you can find a home that you really want to be in. Jeremy, Matt. Well, I, I wouldn't have time to be on the committee long term, like m multiple years, but I could do it for a while until we get more people. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that would be of use, but. Um... No, that actually could be of great use. We appreciate that, um, but we'll keep trying to scrape so you don't have to do that. You've you've been doing a heck of a lot anyhow. So. Uh, <laughs> We ought to be able to recruit some other people. Thank you, Jeremy. <clears throat> Any other takers before I make a motion on it? All right. I move that Jeremy Matt and John Reed become members of the policy committee. I'll second. second. I think Ted got in there. All right. If there are no objections or abstentions, all in favor. Sounds good. Uh, well, I mean, just to check, it sounded to me like John was a little bit hesitant and it sounded like Alan was thinking maybe of. Of pausing and then he said that he'd continue to scrape. Rather than have me sign up for another committee, um, I'm just kind of wondering what Alan thinks about this because it seems a little bit slightly counter to what he had suggested. Uh, what I care about is is getting people who will show up at meetings, and if if Jeremy, you think that's going to be hard for you, a considerable number for a considerable number of the meetings, then I really think probably you shouldn't be you shouldn't be on the committee because it it it, it will it will cause us to have lack of quorum, and that puts us you know that that puts us further back. At least now. John Morris and I can have a two person conversation and we can actually have a committee meeting. And, you know, I, I'm I'm willing for for to to go through the meeting uh, and for John to listen to what his other opportunities might be. And I, I just want people to end up at a place that it's a happy place for them and mm -hmm. a place where where they think they're doing something that's valuable and they can contribute to. So, Tom, I, I, I guess the. The motion has gone through. Have, have we voted on it yet, or um, we haven't voted on it? Yet? Well, we did. Uh, but go ahead. I, I kind of, we... I kind of objected. Um, if you, so okay. I, I'm not sure we've officially voted on it yet. But we'll, whatever. Could I, could I possibly offer a tabling of the of the motion, at least for the end of the tour, for the rest of the meeting, and we'll see where we are. You know, and, um, and to be clear, Alan, if if I'm appointed, I will show up. It's just that I will not stay on for multiple years. You know, it'll, it'll be a few months that I can take on an extra committee. Um, if that makes sense. Oh no, it it makes sense. It it's good to have long term people, but uh, at this point, we can't be choosy. We you know, beggars can't be choosy, and we're a beggar at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Chuck. 
Um, I'm about to make a comparable plea for the communications committee. Uh, and so if we want to wrap the policy committee conversation first, that would make a, a ton of sense. But if 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 we feel that's done, uh, I'd, I'd be excited to get the floor for a moment to talk about our needs. All right. I think we ought to leave it up to the to the two gentlemen, John and Jeremy, to tell us if they'd like us to back off and give them a bit more breathing room during the meeting, <clears throat> and we'll return to this. But mine, uh, mine was just going to be a, a general informational plea to the uh, overall body, not necessarily to the two individuals. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why, I mean, why, why don't I, really I just have, make I've, it then? So communications is uh, right now at that dreaded four number that was discussed. Uh, and unfortunately, one of those people is uh, presently taking a little bit of a hiatus. He's still officially on the committee, but uh, he's taking a little bit of a pause. Um, and as a result of that, we effectively have a, a body of four where we only have three people who ever can come. Um, and so we are not meeting quorum um, and, and regularly. And so uh, the ask would be, if you have any interest in joining the communications committee and contributing to our work, we work closely with uh, Olivia and Janiel on the community relations work, on website work, on talking about how we talk about ourselves to our communities. Uh, we would be more than well, you know, more than welcoming of uh, some some new new minds and new perspectives on the committee. So Alan, you had a request to table. Maybe we should just revisit this whole conversation prior to us going into any sort of executive committee or closing out this meeting, um, just to see where folks are at. Uh, I there was I did make a motion, and then um, Jeremy, you know, jumped in. I, given this format, it makes sense to allow a little extra leeway on what counts as a, a full vote or not um, to allow people to give a chance to speak up. So I'm going to be under the assumption that that was not a full vote. Um, and that that motion is not closed, but instead we're going to table it until later in this meeting, hopefully. I think that David, makes sense. David Mannix. Yes, um, for the Finance Committee, if I could change topics here a minute. We have uh, currently have four members. We have myself and Linda as vice chair, and we also have Jerry and Ted on our committee, and we are going to make a um proposal to this group that we add a member who's already discussed her membership with the finance committee we've given them, uh, her our full support and we would like to add sybil schlesinger the alternate delegate from moortown to the finance and audit committee and i want to put that before the board for a vote second that was a formal motion david yes Seconded no, by Jeremy. Is there any further discussion on adding Sewell? Christopher, your hand is raised, but is that from a different topic? Um, it's it's related to uh, you know committee membership in general and attendance. Um, so for me personally, I I would love to contribute more and and join um, more, but my evenings are are really, really challenging. Um, and I could I could find ways to shift things around in my schedule during the day. And so I'm, I'm wondering if if maybe there are other people out there who are similar to me where they could make, you know, a commitment once or twice a month or, or more, you know, of an hour during during the, the you know, the weekdays. Um, and if so, if that was the case, could we consider moving one or more of these committees to a non evening time um, and then have more membership during those times. I guess could we I don't know should we should we you know do something where we kind of you know have people tell us if if there are others like me who could could make the commitments during the during the week. It's a difficult question. We try to do it in this format, this many people. Um, so the scheduling of the committees is entirely up to the committee. Um, so within the committee, they can decide, you know, gee, Thursdays don't work. Let's do Wednesdays at two or whatever. Um, but that would be an internal to the committee discussion. Now, I understand that also plays into, though, whether or not someone wants to be on a committee. 
And so I would suggest probably reaching out to the chair of that committee might be the best way to get a sense of whether or not there's room for movement. Uh, Chuck, you're up. Now, uh, just to respond to that, Christopher, um, I personally would love that change. You know, as a as a, a dad of young kids, um, evenings are precious to me, and I could feel a little more comfortable eating a little bit in the daytime hours when mm -hmm. I can move some stuff around. But to to Tom's point, it's ultimately at the discretion of the committee. Um, so, you know, I, I'd be willing to float that by communications committee, whether it would work for the other members of the communications committee or not. I wouldn't even begin to try to speculate, uh, but I'm happy to at least float float it as a topic of discussion. And, and so, just to respond to that, I would, uh, you know, for the record, I, I would be happy to join any one of the committees. I'm not precious what committees I join. I'm, I'm happy to contribute, um, but I can move things around during the day. So if, if one can move during the now, I, there may be some things on my calendar I can't move, so I can't just automatically commit. But um, if, if somebody's open to that discussion, then I'm happy to join more. So before we go on anymore on the rest of this conversation, this works still under motion for Sybil. Are there any things related right. to Sybil joining the policy committee before we move on to other topics? Finance. Please wave a hand if you've already got your hand up. You said finance. Finance. Did I say please. finance? Sorry, finance. Yeah. Finance. No, you well, right. <laughs> it should be finance. Just right. All of them. Okay, finance committee, you're right. Where are we at? Hands waving at me. I'm going to call the vote for it. Is there anybody who objects or abstains from Sybil being on the finance committee? All right. Oh, RD's got a hand up, finger up. You're on mute. I can't hear you, RD. You need to unmute. You're still muted, RD. He's Trying to get it. The top left hand corner to the left of the red leave button. Thank you. I just want to note that I have just logged in. I am a member, not a guest. Thank you. All right. Neither an extension or a denial. I'm going to say that Sybil has passed the vote uh, and is now part of the finance committee. All right. Thank you, Tom. Uh, there were a number of hands up and I'm afraid I've lost count of who was first or next, but Alan, your hand is still up, so why don't you go ahead? Yeah, I just had a quick question of Christopher. Christopher, how do you define daytime hours? Do, do they go until six to five, four? What, what, what do you? I mean, you know, really like 11 to two? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, typical nine to five, you know. Okay, because we've tried five, and that's, in fact, a number of committees I think have tried or are still using five, and that's been sort of a slide spot, you know, it's it's not really daytime, it's not really nighttime, it's sort of pushing into dinner time, but for some people that seems to work. Um, but I, I just wanted to see what what you thought were the parameters, yeah. and that's fine, you know, five makes and, sense, yeah, ending, it's a work day. In, in, my, in my mind, ending ending by five. Yeah, workday stuff. OK, thank you. Jeremy, Matt? Yeah, I'm just going to real quick toss myself in on the other side of this. I do not really have flexibility during the day to do that. And if anything, I have a lot of trouble sometimes meeting those 5 or 5.30 meetings. And I'm rushing to get done with what I need to get done for work, get in my car, and I'm taking the call from the car while I'm driving home, which Ed Barnett? I'm wondering if this speaks to some sort of governing board doodle poll where folks kind of show their avail availability and committees are able to see what the largest slice is. Because um, I similarly to Jeremy, especially during these 18 weeks of the year when the legislature is in session, I am like flat out during the day and there's just no realistic opportunity for me to make meetings. So it may be helpful for committee to see where general governing board availability is if we all kind of committed to showing what's best. That's an excellent idea, um, whether it's a doodle poll or some document somewhere, but we can line that up. Um, we'll take that back and, and even the executive committee and uh, try to execute that. 
All right, still on boards and committee memberships. Anybody else on committee memberships? Um, another topic in this area we wanted to look at is on January 8th, Woodbury voted John Reed in with Michael Gray as the alternate. I just wanted to see, had that already been confirmed was one question, if that had been confirmed last meeting, or if not, do we want to confirm that appointment today? I mean, I don't think that we confirm appointments. I think that yeah. we're told by the town who the delegates are. I think only if there's a big problem can we go back and, you know, with some cause say that someone is not, you know. Uh, anyways, welcome. Um, if you could please have your select board uh, send me a letter um, indicating your appointment, though, uh, that would be very appreciated. We have that for okay. John. Oh, we do. OK, perfect. I'm sorry. I hadn't seen that come through my. I'll send it to you. OK, thanks, Gino. John. Yeah, just uh, listening to this and thinking I'd be happy being on the policy committee. I have flexibility. Luckily, so I could meet any time and cheerfully sign up for that if um, Alan and the rest of the board wants to do that. First Wednesday of the month at 5 p.m. works for you? Absolutely. Okay. Well, then I think that that sounds like that sounds like a go. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, another appointment that was came up is Waterbury has approved uh, swapping Christopher Schenk and Linda Gravel. So I don't know again that we need to do any sort of confirmation of that, but if there's any connected things. Um, are either of you leading a committee at the moment? I don't think so, right? I am not. I, bl I believe I'm back as vice chair on the operations committee. Uh, and I think she, well, I think she's vice chair on some. Finance. She okay. is, yeah. The, um, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Alan, but I believe a member a delegate has to be the chair of each committee is that ringing a bell uh it does ring a bell but i i'd have to look at the rules because we've we've struggled with this a couple of times um you know i i think we changed it so somebody So that an alternate delegate can be a chair because hasn't john walters been chairing at some times, Chuck, no? Okay. He, he was vice he was vice chair. Um, and we've never said anything about vice chairs not uh having to be delegates. Uh, but I believe there was something in place for a bit to Jeremy Hansen's point in chat, uh, that they would have to be a, a delegate or alternate, a member of the board. Okay. It sounds like it may be moot in this case, anyways. Jeremy not? Right. Oh. No, no, never mind. It was covered. Okay. Yeah, and actually, uh, so, um, I'm just going to call out a little bit of language in the executive committee charter. Uh, the executive committee charter says committee vice chairs shall be allowed to serve as alternates in place of a committee chair for quorum and voting purposes when the committee chair for the same committee is absent so long as they are also a member of the board. Which I think sort of implies that if the if a vice chair is not a member of the board, they can't serve in that executive committee capacity, um, which seems interrelated. Yeah, but alternates could. Delegates are alternates. So is the way that I would hear that. Alternates, yes. Members of the board. Okay. Your hand is still up, Jeremy. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I just thought back. Um, it sounded like John had uh, volunteered for the Finance Committee, so I guess I'd like to make a motion to appoint John Reed to the Finance Committee. Second. I think uh, he volunteered finance. for the Policy Committee. Or Policy, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I'll right. take that as a friendly amendment. Yep. We already have, have, no we have, we have a table motion for that. Exactly. I move okay. to take, well, I move to, I move to take off the table the motion for uh, appointment to the policy committee. I'll second. That just needs it. Great. That just needs a majority, and we can do it. 
Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? Majority holds it. John, welcome to the policy committee. All right, Chuck. I'll send you an motion, email, John, about the, that. The motion was for John and Jeremy. So if we want it to just be John, we, we need to amend the motion. Um, although I True. guess maybe we just passed the motion. So uh, Tom, your call, how you want to unwind that. Where does that Tom, put, um, where, So two more um, moves for CUF4, correct, Alan? Uh, that Five. is correct. Okay, and that and four is bad. So I'll resign from the policy committee. <laughs> and if you need another person, let me know and I'll jump in. How about that? Yeah, no, actually one person gets us to three and that's good. Correct. So you're but so two, so you're saying two would could two could two might cause more problems than it's worth. So it sounded like that's what you were saying, because okay. then everyone needs to attend. Correct. For quarter. right, right. So I mean, you know, John could do it for six months, and then maybe he could convince you to come on for the next six months. How's that? <laughs> Sounds good. So can can I offer an amended motion that? Uh, I think John it's already Reed. passed. It's already Has passed. It? Okay. Now. Okay. It's already passed, and I've resigned like 30 seconds later. <laughs> and Sibla, I'm really sorry for these minutes. <laughs> I'm laughing. Welcome to being chair, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion on boards and committee memberships? All right. Moving on to human resources and board training. Uh, Janiel. Thanks. So we have we did retain a human resources specialist and consultant who has put together a couple of trainings for us. There are two trainings. One is for leaders of CV Fiber that includes the employees and the chairs of committees. Um, that training will take place in person in Barrie on the 23rd of February. And it will be a four hour session starting at 830. And then following that, we're going to have a an optional visit to the warehouse. So a moving meeting. We do have to publicly notice it for reasons of quorum because we are um, technically it's a public hearing or it's a public meeting. So I'll be sending out a notice as well as a reminder to the leadership of CV Fiber um, inviting you to that meeting. Um, if you miss that meeting, I'm going to see if we can have some sort of a recording of the, not the warehouse portion, but the um, human resources training portion in the morning so that we can um, give it to everyone who can't necessarily make it, if anybody must miss. And you'll need to acknowledge the receipt of understanding of the policies and receipt of the training. So that's for the leaders of CV Fiber. Following town meeting day, the week after town meeting day week, we're looking at doing a board wide training that might be about two and a half hours long, teams only, remote only. Um, I will be sending out a doodle poll to um, to get availability. Speaking of which, we would just we just had this conversation about um, availability of board members a few minutes ago. So specific to the board wide human resources and board responsibility training, we will be sending out a, po a poll. It will most likely be that Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday following town meeting day, uh, 5.30 to 8 o'clock at night. Again, this will be a recorded session. You don't have to actually physically be there. You will need to acknowledge receipt of the CV fiber policies as well as of the training. So this will be um, frequently asked questions from the CV fiber staff. So Lucas, Olivia, and I will be talking for a bit, and then we will have our human resources consultant talking about um, human resources matters. And this is part of our responsibilities as, as an employer and as a, a public entity. So everyone will be compliant with all those annual trainings. And then thereafter, any new board members will be required to watch that training. And once a year, we'll repeat that training. So look out for that poll to, to um, come through to um to find out your availability and then the training will happen um in that beginning part of March. Any questions on training? 
I had a note here, Janiel, about um, some HR policies and benefits that we had talked about last month. I didn't know if you wanted to. Yeah, we did. So last month we had we we just uh, adopted our our human resources policies, and it, there was a question by someone, a member of the board, about do we offer paid parental leave and the answer is we we do not however we what we did is we looked into i got a i got quotes for short and long term disability insurance um because that's a way to address um that we we that we are not offering paid parental leave so in order to make our budget um and make it work in the current budget we are reassessing all of our insurances and this is important also because all of our insurances will renew in April. So I've got a requote and am running these requotes by um, some partners uh, and assessing where we can maybe reduce some insurances. Specifically, we think we might be able to reduce insurances in cyber because we have we have no before now. We've run some of those those phishing tests. Um, and there could be some other places where we can reduce some levels of insurance and save costs and and adjust those costs to help with um, employee benefits. Uh, and then there might be other places where we need to increase insurances. So that's something else that we're we're looking into, just taking a holistic look at what our insurance needs are and how we might be able to provide um, better better um, benefits for our employees. Any other questions on HR or related matters? All right, move on to drops policy. I'm not sure who's taking this one. Maybe there's been an open conversation. But. Well, there's been a lot of conversations and uh, around this, but just the high level, we, we're still waiting on numbers from Waitsfield and NRTC about the um, about the cost that, that we're looking at for long drops. That's drops over 400 feet. We think it's actually a very small percentage of drops that are over 400 feet. But um, some of the numbers that we're looking at um, are that it, 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 the cost is actually higher than a dollar a foot for what we're paying out. So um, we're now assessing those costs with Waitsfield and NRTC. Jerry? Yeah, I, I, I just would like to confirm and follow up with what Janil's saying. We're looking at the data to understand exactly you know, what it is that we're charging people. And not only what we're charging people, but we also want to look at what we're telling people they will have to pay because if they decide no, then they don't show up on our list of folks that were charged. So we're, 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 we're going to do a little bit of a deeper dive, um, but I, I, I don't think this is quite as big of an issue as it appears to be, um, but surely by next month we'll have more more data and this is has to be data driven right so that we'll have more data to discuss um when when we meet again and that's right again i'll stop there that's right and it, it, we think it's a small percentage of people but for those small percentage of people who it applies to it's a big deal so we we do have to take it seriously and we have to be very clear in our communications with with the policies any other questions or thoughts on this topic Drops policy. John here. I just have ahead, one uh, question. Um, what are the what are the neighboring CUDs uh, doing in this area? Is is there some alignment in what the pricing is from one CUD to another? Yeah, they're the, the other CUDs are also doing the same dollar um, per foot after four hundred. And um, especially NEK Broadband also has a distributed split and they have the same operator and the operators reassessing the costs as well. So we're all in the same boat with a similar with a similar pricing policy and a, a similar question mark that we have for these sometimes long drops due to the way our network was designed, i.e. distributed split. Yeah. Sure. Just thinking how small Vermont is, it seems like the more there's uniformity from one CUD to another, that just helps helps it make sense and helps explain it. Absolutely, yeah, very consistent among CUDs, John. Thanks. 
I guess I have a question um, in that in previous meetings, there's been, it appears to have been a, a difference between a drop and an installation. And I just wanted to get some, some clarification of terms there. If they are the same thing, you know, we get to know that. And if they're not, then what's the difference? Yeah, there's there's a difference. There's the drops and then there's um, the actual install and the drop has to happen before the installation. Um, so the the drop is, uh, I don't know if Lucas wants to better explain it than I do, but but they are two separate things. Yeah, so the drop actually terminates on the outside of the, the house and then you have the cabling running in where it actually terminates for the equipment. Gotcha. So installation is more inside the house and drops are from the pole to the house. Exactly. Yes. Gotcha. Thank you. But not consistently used because we talk about <laughs> installs that mean the whole thing. So there, you know, yeah, we, we probably need to tighten up the way we talk about these things, especially uh, you know, if we're gonna put some numbers to it. But yeah, it's yeah. It's come more to like given it that we have actual drop crews now as opposed to just an in, you know the installation. So it's now changed hands to to two different groups as opposed to one. Uh, but in the mind of the customer, it's you know it's all the installation, right? Yeah. Saw a hand up briefly, but I missed who it was. Speak now or forever. All right, we will move on. Finance update and outlook. There was some good news on bead grant uh, preparation money. Uh, Janiel, if you have more details. Yes, uh, the state of Vermont put out a grant opportunity so that CUDs could um, take advantage of funding for preparation for the bead application process. It's going to be a highly competitive process. We put in an application to help support us in, um, in consulting and GIS and some other items that we need, a match analysis so that we can best position ourselves for bead and our grant was awarded in the amount of $145,600 on Monday. So we have that extra funding to help us get to a stronger place for a bead. Uh, um, Janiel, what was the grant program uh, under which this was awarded? It's the sub recipient grant program through VCDD. Okay, thank you. And there were similar awards to our sister CUDs who we are potentially looking at working with to share resources and make for a stronger grant. So, Alan, you're on mute. And if I can understand this correctly, we got a grant to help us apply for a grant of bead money? Correct. Is that a common kind of way to do this? Or I, I've, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard of this before. Because it's a complicated and competitive process, um, VCBB wanted to put this out to all potential subrecipients of the 229 million that is up for grabs um, for bead. So they made it available to everybody, including CUDs, but not limited to CUDs and specifically could not favor CUDs um, so that everyone has a fair shot at bead. So it's, I guess it's common for very complicated grant type of application processes. Bead is go going to be a complicated grant application process and we must start that due diligence now. In fact, we have started that due diligence to look at potential project areas, um, build sequence costs, addresses to put in, challenges. Um, so it is a complex grant pr process and this money will help us better position ourselves. So does the money for the grant to get a grant come from the grant funds? It's a separate. It's a separate funding opportunity. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. I just. I just don't. I just don't think in those in those lines. You know. I just. 
uh, Alan, uh, uh, municipalities facing uh, uh, flood relief grant applications are eligible for municipal technical assistance grants, um, which are of the same uh, of the same kind of grants as uh, the same milk. Huh? They're grants that help you um, apply for grants. Correct. It's not yeah. okay. Grant. Yeah. So so now we have some money to help us apply for some money. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Congratulations. <laughs> this is Krista, um, in case you want to know who the phone number is. Could Krista. somebody would it would it Krista say? Oh, hi, Krista. She was just identifying herself hi. for the meeting minutes, which well, is very welcome. much appreciated. <laughs> very much, yes. David Lawrence. Yes, hi. Unfortunately, per the email I was sending yesterday, I have a conflict on this business trip, and I was kind of hoping we'd get to the other order of business, but it doesn't look like we're going to before I have to leave in five minutes. Uh, so I just, how are we doing on quorum? Uh, even with my absence, are we still good on quorum? I believe we uh, have at least 13 present at the moment. Okay, and then the other thing would just be that, you know, without, we're not in executive session yet or anything, but I'll just indicate in general my support for the action when it comes under discussion. So, uh, you know, pending anything surprising that maybe comes up in the conversation, right? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I won't be here for that, but in general, I am in, I'm in favor. So, but uh, regrettably, I will have to be going. So, uh, good luck. Thank you. And I will take that as a nice transition into the next topic, unless anybody has anything else on this topic. Um, hopefully you've all received um, and had a chance to look through the draft MOU that was shared by Janiel. Um, it lays the foundation for further development um, of... Yes, go ahead, we just, want, we just want to make sure that we keep substance out of the public session. Yes. Um, so this work is moving somewhat quickly. Um, there are some moving deadlines to consider, so we wanna try to get through as much as we can tonight. Um, the next, this is probably gonna represent a, a significant shift for our company, if for our organization, if we decide to go this track. Um, so with that in mind, um, and given how this is fairly significantly into our you know, inner workings of our company, these are very much things that we wanna keep business confidential um, and there will be you know, ramifications if other parties out there were to get wind of this before, you know, it's ready to be revealed. So with all that said, um, are there any objections to me going into or, or starting the, the process going into a, a uh, executive session? I just want to open up the floor for a chance for people to have a voice before we go into an executive session. Not hearing anything. Switch over to the right language. All right, um, I move that uh, we enter executive session under 1 VSA 313A1 to discuss contracts as premature public knowledge would clearly place CB fiber at a substantial disadvantage and invite staff and others present whose information is needed. Uh, and those folks would be all CV fiber staff. Uh, is there anyone else on the call? Uh, Krista shoot. Anyone else? Denise Sullivan, NEK Broadband and Bakuda. Sullivan. Um, and uh, Krista Shute. Yep, Krista. And oh, Bonnie okay. Batchelder is um, is staff of oh, sorts, yeah. but she's she's important to have. And Lori Beth is staff of sorts as well as she's treasurer. Those are very important folks to have with us. With those folks included, and sorry for whoever's taking the minutes, um, that under 1 VSA 313B, uh, we'd be permitted to have those people enter into executive session as well. Second. Seconded by Jeremy. Any discussion? None. So uh, is put it to a vote. Um, is there any abstaining or opposed? All right, the motion passes. Before we go into executive session, uh, we will need to cut off uh, the minutes from recording. So I'm stopping the recording. It is 7.02 p.m.
p.m. If you hold on just one minute. At 8.32, um, Tom Fisher has uh, called us out of executive session. Thank you. And uh, I would like to move that the CV Fiber Board direct our executive director to sign the MOU as discussed in executive session. Second. Second. Seconded by Chuck. Open to discussion. Alan. So You're there muted, is an understand there is there is understanding that there will be further refinement of certain issues such as non-disclosure agreements. Is that understood? Okay. That's my understanding, yes. Okay. Any other comments? Let's see if we can do the Hail Mary pass here. Okay. Is anybody opposed or are there any abstentions? A good long wait. We look All forward right. to working I think together. We, I think we have a unanimous decision. Thank you very much. And uh, I think we can end the meter meeting here at uh, 8.33.